he's one of the people I like. Gibran, I mean, he's one of the people I read extensively. And uh, he's got a lot in common kind of with an Italian poet, a uh, writer called Italo Calvino. Uh, Italo did, Italo, uh, Calvino did sort of the Italian thing, but he was a magical realist in like from the 50s to the 80s. If you've never read him, I highly recommend him. I have a bunch of his books, but I haven't, I'm not really ready to part with them yet, but I'll probably bring it up for two. But he did that, uh, in a sense, parable visualization, writing in terms of parables, bigger overarching stories. He took very simple ideas and made them very big by making them crystalline and, and gen sort of generic to a degree, you know, both great writers. But hey, since you read that, I'm going to try to do a piece that uh, I wrote a while back, and I'll just tell the story. Uh, it, it ends on, it, I'll leave it up to y'all whether y'all think it's a dark ending or not. Um, but it, that's sort of why I want to tell it. So it, it's, it's called On the Night, on, on the Shoulders of a Night Like This. And, and like all good folk tales, it starts the same way, which is once upon a time. Once upon a time, there was a knight who was actually a farmer, and his king called him into battle, to a battlefield that was far, far away. So he got his chainmail shirt his vest and his sword and he said goodbye to his two children and his wife and he set out on a journey to get to the battlefield he didn't know when he was going to get there but he knew he had been called to do to wage war for his sire so in the dark of rain, in the dark of night, he walked as fast and as best he could in route to get to the battlefield. And as evening wore on, and the sun had set, and night approached, the rain came on and began to pour down. But in his heart, he still knew he had to get to the battlefield, but something else inside him said he must take shelter for a brief moment and wait out the storm. So into a cave he went and he made himself a fire and took out his grub, iron rations or whatever, took out his food and let his clothes dry and sat beside the fire. He still didn't know when the battle was going to occur or how far away he was. He just knew he had to get there. So he's sitting by his fire, and he grows tired, weary from the walk. Part of his mind says he must continue, and yet his body tells him it's time to sleep. So he curls up with his, with his clothes or whatever, and he falls asleep. When the sun rises the next morning, his fire has gone out, he wakes up and feels panicked that he might have missed the battle that his, call, his king had called him to. So he puts on his garb, puts on his chainmail, puts on his sword, and makes high tails it as fast as he could to the battlefield. And he walks, he walks through the woods, long goes up the hill, down the hill, down the hill. And then he gets over the crest of a hill. And he comes over the crest of the hill, and he looks down, and the battle's over. Um, he missed the battle. Yeah. Yeah. And, and he, as he's at the battle, there, of course, the, pe the women and stuff and the crows and things are taking care of the dead bodies. And he wonders, and that's why I say, this is, I leave the ending up to you. He wonders, had he just been graced? He had been some people say he was graced. And he wasn't, he felt graced, but part of him felt like he had missed something. Mm -hmm. And so he, of course, goes home, makes the high tech, heads back home, he's missed the battlefield, 
But he didn't die. See, that's the thing. The guy didn't die. He could have fought in that war and been a hero, but he could have fought in that war and <laughs> lost it. And he could have, another thing, had to kill people and stuff. And so he didn't. He missed it. But he's not sure. <laughs> so he goes home. He heads back home. He walks in the door. He opens up the door. And his wife and two children come streaming at him. Give him hugs and kisses and shower with him and hugs and kisses and say, I'm so glad to see you. Mm. That's the story of that. Beautiful story, beautiful story. Do you know about the now, you, not the story of the two.